Hey guys, it's me, and today I got the cone arm cartridge assembly for the Gorilla turntable. And I thought we would put this together, but before we do, let me show you the basics of this head shell. Number one, this head shell is used on older Gerard turntables. There's a three pin and a four pin version. Uh, this is the three and four pin, and there's four wires. And the thing is, you need to watch out for is that these wires are using European colors that were common back in the 60s. Uh, it's not too hard to figure out. Here we have a brand new ceramic cartridge. This is a Puffin Steel P132D. And the reason I chose to go, this can use either magnetic or ceramic. The reason I chose to go ceramic is because it's cheaper. The needles don't cost as much to put in. Um, it's a standard flip over. Let me take it out of the box and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, here we have the, the cartridge itself here, and it has your little mounting bracket adapter that would mount in where it is on the other assembly, and it has your standard ceramic cartridge with a little flip over between 33 and um, LPs and 78s, and it has the four leads in the back for the connections to the amplifier. And the reason I chose to use this instead of going with a certain magnetic is this is a lot cheaper. And uh, and also, if you tend to move a lot, these are not likely to get as much destroyed. These needles are fairly inexpensive. They're like $6 a piece. Um, the same adapter bracket can be used also to mount those um, crossly type cartridges in here as well, um, which they recommend to use the P192 because they're skinnier. Now, I don't need a skinnier for this head shell because it's, uh, you can see how it goes in the sticking in here. You can see how it's going to go in just like this. And then, um... The only thing is, you might be asking, and I wouldn't be surprised if you did ask, Gee, Michelle, what if this thing is too short? What if you need to raise it up? Well, um, first of all, by default, the Gerard, um, when they made these back in the 60s, um, England was still on the um, imperial measurements, and they didn't use uh, American threads, obviously. They used British. So, unfortunately... And fortunately, it's going to be both ways, these screws can be replaced um, because underneath the uh, Gerard head shell, there is the matching nuts. So you can actually replace these with longer screws, and you can replace these with metrics. It doesn't matter. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is let's start by trying to put this in before we wire it and see if it's going to look like it's not going to, you know, be too low. If it is, I will have to find a way to raise it up with a shim. But uh, for now, let's see if we can get this working as it is with the existing screws. Because to, to get to the other one inside here, I have to take this um, decorative piece off. Um, this is not uncommonly going to happen. It's gonna, they do work loose after a while because the glue does dry out. So you might end up stubbing and have the thing fall off anyway. So let me see if we can get this connected and I will see how that works when we get to the next stage. That was a pain in the ass. Alright, and the reason it was a pain in the ass is two things. Number one, this head shell, when it goes laying on the record, it's going to be like right near the um, record. I always like to have the head shell be a little bit higher than the record, but not by much. It's Second thing is, um, the I think this should be a little bit higher. It seems like it's a little low, so maybe what I might do is I could cut this a little bit, the middle here. I'd hate to do that. Um... But what I'm concerned about is when I put this record on the turntable, is it going to be enough distance? And I'm telling you right now, I think it might be. Uh, the only thing is, is that record. I think the notch needs to. I think I think I need a bigger spacer. Um, because it's sort of. You can see how the flipper works on the cartridge here. It's between 33 and 78. So that's that's pretty standard. 
Um, so what I'm going to do next is, even though it's not exactly really where I want it, um, I can see it right now looking at the stylus. It's like right there in the edge. So the question is, is when you're playing a record, is it going to try to drag the front of the head shell around? Because you see, this thing was designed as a universal shell. So you'll notice that this is part here. And what you can do is you can cut this out. And that's for um, a kind of thing that turns the whole cartridge. Somebody flips it over. Not just like the needle here, like this with the levers, but the whole cartridge flips over. Um, that's what this was designed to support. It also supports the Zenith type cartridge on the top. So you can actually take the Carrera label off and then you can put it in a Zenith type cartridge. And then you have a little push button and you turn the cartridge needle around that way. So it could be used for that. Plus it works for magnetic cartridges. So I just don't think it's somehow it just doesn't. Yeah, I maybe my work. Don't hold my breath to it. I think it's gonna hold it, but so okay. Uh, there we go. That's why. Ah, uh, okay. So it's gonna okay. That's what it was. The needle wasn't sitting in the hole. Okay, so now I can see the needle flips up and down like it should. So maybe it'll work. But I'm still going to have to do something with this needle here. Because it's sort of, you can see it's not exactly straight on. The easiest way to do that is what I'm going to do. I hate to do it's original plastic, but I'm going to have to. Is I'm going to have to cut this out a little bit so it better sits the notch. Uh, yeah, so let me do that. And then uh, we'll come back. We'll see if it works and play it on. I'll see if we can get the turntable to play some music using our portable amplifier in the kitchen because um, yeah, it's got a built-in ceramic stage. So let's see if we can get this working so we can get this playing some records. Okay, so this is the turntable. I wanted to show you this before we start spinning any discs on it. Um, like many turntables of this class, there is... Um, this is a record changer, and this is a Gerber 210, and it's still a little dirty. But uh, there, this thing has a weight, a cantilever spring weight mechanism that's designed to um, uh, offset the weight of the cartridge. Now, I didn't have a scale, um, but I do know that this track, cartridge tracks between four and five grams. And so that was the first thing I did was I just had to basically just guess. <laughs> uh, originally I had it set for the magnetic weight for the original uh, Shure RX 25 XT, which was too light. And so it would just basically slide across the record. Um, the amplifier is, a, this is an old voice of music mono amplifier and this is stereo so we had to use a y adapter to connect both channels together and um that plug that's on the top was designed for a marshall rca plugs or marshall ones I have much longer tails than the standard ones that we know today. So unfortunately, I didn't have the adapters. However, this turntable does have the Marshall type plugs, but for some reason, even they weren't making very solid contact. Um, but for now, we got it working. So let's start by showing you how this works. I don't know how much of this I can play without getting YouTube screaming at me about copyright. This record is not in the best of shape. Um, it was played to death by the original owner, and certainly I played it to death quite a bit myself. So here's how you slide it on. With only one hand. You just put it on like that, and you slide it. This is going to use the automatic. You can use it manual, too. So you see that thing there? That thing sizes the record. So it automatically adjusts for different size records. And when you're done, I'll just simulate it being done here. Okay, the needle, once it gets to the end of the record, it goes back, it sees there's no record there. 
it goes and tells it that that's the last record state and then it shuts off that's how that works likewise when you start it if you have multiple records you want to restart it just want to slide it back up again slide that back down you can either run it manually like in, like modern turntables where you don't have the record changer function I wanted the record changer function back because I like to be able to stack records on I'm playing by a lot I'm gonna play 7845 and 16s. Uh, I haven't seen too many 16 RPM records in my time. But like I said, this record is not the best of shape. So that's what it sounds like on this mechanism. And if you really just want to shut it off, you can manually just do that. Press that button again. And if it was more than one record, it would grab the next record. Again, the sizer comes in, sizes the disc. It sees that there's nothing there. And so it goes into shut bone state, which is what it's doing. So it just turns it off. This turntable has a interesting mechanism that Garrard did to prevent getting flat boxes on our flat spots on the rim drive. The brake actually does two things at once one it disengages the rim drive from both the the platter or the the platter itself and the, the spindle motor so right now this thing if it wasn't for the brake would be free spinning um so that was something garrett did specifically to protect the record from damage so that a design decision by the fee to make sure that uh, the record player works properly. Even though I have it connected up as a ceramic cartridge, you still got to connect earth wire to your uh, amplifier to eliminate the hum noise, okay? Um, so, yes, uh, you need that, all right? So, now, if you are setting this up as a mono-only cartridge, according to what I've read, the procedure is basically is to do similar to what I did but inside the cartridge. That is to connect the two um, grounds together and then connect the two oak channels together in the cartridge. So it would still be able to play a mono record. Uh, I just used a Y adapter. Because when we're done, we're going to be hooking this up to the main amplifier in the other room. I just want to get this hooked up right now for testing purposes. And it's working. So, unfortunately, because I can't play a lot of music because of YouTube's going to give me copyright strikes like crazy, I'll just tell you is as I've lubricated it, greased it, uh, I did attempt to level it as best I could. Um, unfortunately, it's not exactly dead on perfect, um, but it's pretty good. I'm not going to complain. In fact, that I didn't even use leveling feet. I just basically uh, just stuck a uh, a CD case underneath <laughs> in one corner <laughs> to bring it up the level. Um, so at least I can say I can play my music on this. And what I like about a record changer versus a um, other things is I can stack like five or six records up here. And then it will just go through them. Uh, and that's what makes you see a record changer nicer uh, than a single record player like the Crossley. Because the Crossley can only play one run record at a time. You can't stack a bunch of them up. Um, a lot of times when you have multi-record sets, you get to something called what they call automatic uh, play order. So um, versus instead of saying record being side one, side two, side three, side four, side five, side six. It would be like side on one record will be side one, then side two will be on the second record, and then side five will be on the third record if there's three records so that you could stack them up and so that they would play in order from side one, two, three, and flip over a stack, four, five, six. So that's where these turntables have great things for parties because you can actually stack a whole bunch of records and then just have to flip it over just ever so often. But right now, the point is, is it's working, and, and that's 
Uh, let me just get to tweak some of the things on it. Um, next project we're going to be working on is with the connecting this to the big stereo with a proper or I um with a proper impedance match and proper voltage level of that match. And then an RIAA circuit for both this turntable and the Crossley to properly make them sound proper on the system set for line level inputs. This is a, this is close to line level as you can get because ceramic cartridges are extremely powerful. Um, this one generates about five tenths of a volt. Um, this doesn't need the kind of amplification that a magnetic cartridge does. Um, so in that case, this is great. That's why I use them in crosses. It's because they don't need a lot of energy um, amplification to make them louder. But unfortunately, uh, the company who makes the crossley cartridge, um, they didn't consider the fact is that these ceramic inputs, they didn't even put in the amplifier and RIA equalization. You're talking about what? Per channel. Two capacitors and two resistors to make a proper RIAA. And that's, they didn't even bother to do that. And so I'm going to basically be building a circuit that is universal, that can be used for any turntable, and will pro we'll properly play RIAA. When I say any... Because I got some reel-to-reel -reel tapes that someone recorded from a turntable without by plugging their line in, or the phono input right into the um, line in on the reel-to-reel -reel recorder back in the '60s, and some of the records have no RIAA at all. So that adapter is universal enough that it will even let me plug in that line level reel-to-reel, -reel, which I haven't got yet. I haven't bought one yet, but I will be buying one soon. So I can play those and then maybe refeed them into Audacity or I can feed them into Audacity directly and convert them on the fly and then later on re-record them, record them back onto new reel-to-reel -reel tape cartridge, um, medium or even onto MP3s. But anyway, that's the turntable from 1962, the Gaward 210. Um... It's it's a beast. It, I'm the second owner of it. I that's right. I was the I, the first owner. I knew the first owner. She was an old lady. She had it bought sold us at a tag sale when I was in high school. I bought this turntable because I thought it looked cool. I still think it looks cool. Um, I lubricated it now. It's greased. It's it's operating much better now that it's been given some TLC. Um, I know that the, the record I use for this test is terrible, but, uh, you know, you have to deal with YouTube, and that's the way YouTube is around here. But there is a couple songs I do want to hear on it. Um, so for now, I'll let you go. See you guys later. Bye-bye.